possibly the most natural sort of question to ask, given an equation in two variables, is what the value of one variable is, given the value of the other variable. For example, suppose we have the business from the last video that estimates that their benefits cost C is related to their number of employees N by this equation. Say we want to ask the question, how much do they pay for benefits if they have 50 employees? Well, we've just been given a value of N. We just plug that into our equation, and we get C is 328 times 50 plus 2,240. Having the calculator do that arithmetic, 328 times 50 plus 2240, C is 18640. Our answer, $18,640. We might also be given a value of C and asked to find a value of N. We might be asked, for example, how many employees can they provide benefits for with $12,000? Round down, because we're probably not going to get a whole number. This is not giving us a value of N. It's giving us a value of C, a total amount of benefits cost they can pay, and asking us to find how many employees, asking us to find N. So here we're given C is 12,000, and we'll have 12,000 equals 328N plus 2240. What should we do? Well, we solve for N. Subtract 2240 on both sides. So 12,000 minus 2240 is 9760. Now we divide both sides by 328. Uh, and it says round down, n is about 29. Our answer, 29 employees. All right, what about when we're asked to write down the equation? How do we distinguish between the value we're being, being given for the question and the values we're being given to write down the equation. Let's see an example. Here we have a question where a candle burns at a constant rate. After two hours, the candle is 10 centimeters tall. After eight hours, the candle is six centimeters tall. And we want to decide how tall will, will the candle be after four hours. Our variables are t, the time in hours, and as usual, time is going to be independent. Our other variable is h, the candle's height in centimeters, and since t is independent, h will be dependent. What then are the values that we're given? In this problem, we're given three different values of t, right? 2, 8, and 4. We're given the value of h that goes with t equals 2. After two hours, the candle is 10 centimeters tall. We're given the value of h that goes with t equals 8. After eight hours, the candle is 6 centimeters tall. The question is, then, what value of h goes with t equals 4? Notice in this last row, we only know one of the values. Therefore, we won't use that row to set up our equation. We'll use the other two rows. So when t goes up by 6, h goes down by 4. Our slope is the change in h over the change in t 
so negative 2 thirds. Now we need to pick a point to use to set up the equation. I'm going to pick this first row. Um, we get h minus the given h is negative 2 thirds times t minus the given t. Okay, now that we have our equation, we can use our equation to answer the question. So, let's see. H is what we want to find out. T is 4. So we have H minus 10 is negative 2 thirds times 2. That's negative 4 thirds. We'll add 10 to both sides and get H is 10 minus 4 thirds which is, let's see, 10 minus 4 thirds. That's going to be 8 and some fraction. Let's find out what the fraction is. We'll take the fraction part of our earlier answer and convert it to a fraction, 2 thirds. What's the answer to our question? After 4 hours, the candle is 8 and 2 thirds centimeters tall.